Hey, Bruce Jones, I'm here at the Henrietta Chamber of Commerce again, and we've seen an influx, or an increase actually, of uh, emails called phishing emails. Not to be confused with rod and reel, these mm -hmm. uh, spell it P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, and bottom line, these are scammers trying to get your money. I've got Doe Shipman from uh, Shipman Consulting, He's run across a bunch of them in the past few months and weeks, and he's here to kind of tell us a little bit about the problem and really give you some ideas on how to protect yourself and your bank account. Doy? Well, Bruce, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here with you and uh, uh, to talk about this important issue. Um, we are a managed service provider here in the area and uh, a lot of my clients are impacted by this. And so even the folks that aren't my clients, I wanna give this information out to help them. Uh, phishing is a type of a cyber attack where, as, like as you said, a scammer will send you or uh, call you with a message that says, hey, there's, there's something that you need to do. And so usually they're trying to steal your credentials, your logins, your passwords, those types of things, so that they can pretend to be you or to attack somebody else that you may be in the supply chain for. And we see that in a lot of different ways. Like I said, we see it in emails. That's probably the most common. You know, people get those emails all the time, whether it's from a bank that you may or may not have anything to do with, uh, from the IRS or, you know, somebody that's portraying to be a legitimate company. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll take you to a website, uh, you know, may look real, may even have the, uh, the images copied from the IRS or whoever uh, to try to get you to put your login credentials. Um, so I want to address that a little bit more later, but uh, so I, there's a different types of phishing. There's a, and, and there's like 20 different types actually, but I'm going to talk about a few of them. Uh, the email phishing, like we discussed, spear phishing is a more of a targeted attack where the the uh, majority of phishing attacks are just kind of a blanket, like a shotgun effect. Um, there's smishing, which is becoming more and more popular. Those are, those are the messages that you get on your phone. The, and really? uh, smishing stands for SMS phishing, but it comes in sometimes in uh, multimedia messages as well. Yeah, it you know may appear to be from Amazon or may you know FedEx or something along the line. But we're seeing more and more of those on on our personal uh, cell phones and our corporate cell phones. Then there's vishing. And like I said, there's a lot of these. <laughs> vishing is a voice phishing. It's that phone call that says, hey, I'm from the IRS or I'm from Microsoft and you got, uh, you know, your computer's infected. You need to, you know, go to this website. You need to do this type of stuff. Um, and then there's clone phishing, which is uh, an attacker just creates a, a, a copy of a legitimate website to get your information. And all of these things will typically have a sense of urgency to them. And that's what I tell people to be, be wary of. It, it, that sense of urgency should be a, a red flag. You know, the, uh, if the IRS calls you, you're going to, your heart rate's going to go up. If you're wearing your heart rate monitor, right. it may detect an exercise uh, moment <laughs> for you. But, you know, they'll direct you to IRS.gov. You know, they're not going to ask you for your social security information. You know, they're not going to ask you to go to uh, some fake website. It's going to be IRS.gov. And they typically have uh, already sent you a letter or, or those types of things. Uh, so realize that real emergencies don't typically happen over email. Somebody's going to send you a form letter or somebody's going to contact you otherwise. Uh, I see these, and especially in the, the smishing, what's, what we're seeing a rise in are the, the gift card scams. I don't know if you've heard of these or not. Oh, yeah. Uh, but these are the ones where, you know, your boss or your coworker says, hey, I need you to go to Walgreens or Walmart or pick up some Apple gift cards for a client. Uh, and then they want you to scratch off the back and send them the code. Well, I don't know if you've ever received those types of gift cards, but mm -hmm. if I received one as a gift and the, the back of it was scratched off, I was going to think that, you know, somebody's already used it. So chances are you need to follow up with your boss or your coworker outside of that text message or that email and, and see, make sure that it's actually going to be legit. Right. Well, in the old days, back in the early days of uh, the internet, all we had to worry about was the Nigerian scam. That is true, that is true. <laughs> and that's actually a great point. Anything that's too good to be true probably is. Right. You know, the, you know, the winning the lottery is, you know, is very unlikely. Um, winning the lottery that you don't ever enter is really impossible. Now, you know, the, you might find a lottery ticket or a scratch off on the sidewalk, but you're not going to get an email about the lottery that you didn't even try to enter no. into. No, there's the Irish lottery, <laughs> the uh, Canadian lottery. I've right. had about four of those. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, w I would love to, to, to win one of those lotteries you know, with a scratch off, but I'm not 
taking my chances on my email. Yeah. You yeah. know, and those are the unexpected emails that you got to be careful of. Those are the ones that that you know from like you said the the Kansas lottery. You know, when we've never played the Kansas lottery, and there's an attachment that they want you to click on, takes you to a website. Those are the ones that are they're 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 fishing. That's what they're looking for. You bet. Part of the problem today is um, so many companies are outsourcing their um, helplines, mm -hmm. things like that. So you're going to get probably talking to someone with a uh, foreign accent. Mm -hmm. So it could be real if you have called Microsoft, if you called Adobe, someone like that. And I've called both of them. Right, right. But um, here the other day, here at the new at the uh, chamber and over at the newspaper on my website. I uh, got some emails that uh, wanted me, uh, told me my uh, subscription to Geek Squad mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was up. Mm -hmm. Well, they want you to call them. Right. And guess what? That's the biggest scam going. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and it, what they'll do is they'll target like Geek Squad because that's a popular uh, right. through Best Buy. Um, it, those, those, have the, the sense of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. You know, I got one the other day that I almost fell for, just being honest in disclosure. It was from Amazon. And we get a lot of Amazon packages. You know, obviously we like to buy local as much as we can, but a lot of our stuff, there's just not a local place to buy from. Sure. So I'm constantly getting packages. And I was anticipating a network switch for a client to get them back online. And I got an email that said my package had been delayed from Amazon. Mm -hmm. and, that. and I, you know, all of these things that I'm going to say about how to check, <laughs> it almost got me, but I got to the last part of that. And, and I'll tell you what that is in just a second. But it was an update on a delivery. So I was clicking on it and I'm like, wait, a second it just just at the you know at the right time uh, I, I, I uh, caught myself before I uh, went all the way through that so it's it's an unexpected email but it was an expected email because there is that sense of legitimacy sure. but you know what actually got me on that what I recognized was the unprofessional design now now I'm not going to harbor on spell check because uh, I misspell tons and tons of words or I may use the wrong there or your or whatever um, you but the guys that do this, as you said, a lot of times are from, you know, out of country or whatever. And so their grammar as a whole will typically be off. And right. so that's one of the things that when I, I, I give a four step message for this, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and lay that out there. Lay that out. It's called SLAM. And I didn't come up with this. This is called the SLAM method. The first thing, the S is to check the sender. Look and make sure that's actually Amazon.com, not mm -hmm. amazing.com or some variation of the spelling. The L is check the links. When you move your mouse over that link, see what actually shows up. It may say Amazon.com, but when you hover over the link, it will show you that it's a really long website that maybe they've just created. The A in SLAM is to check the attachment. Uh, Microsoft's not going to send you an invoice in an HTML format typically, so look at that attachment to make sure. It's always good to have uh, antivirus uh, software and malware software installed as well. And the M is read the message. As I mentioned earlier, check the grammar, check the spelling, if it just doesn't seem like it's professional, probably not. Uh, and you know, look look for those methods as a as a way to prevent this. Well, um, you know, you're talking about the um, URLs mm -hmm. and that. Invariably, when you get an email in, that's the very first thing I look at. If it comes up with Jenny, Jenny Jones at AOL.com, and it's supposed to be from AT&T. Right. Red flag immediately. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Another thing I found is um, the attachments can actually be loading malware. Yes, sir. So I've been taught and learned the hard way not to click on any attachments from someone I don't know. That's true. Uh, and But even now, in, in uh, 2023, the attachments from somebody that you do know can be problematic. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is, is if, if uh, when we call this upstream and downstream attacks, if somebody that's upstream from you has gotten compromised, then maybe their address book has gotten compromised. So the scammers will send out to their address book. So it may be coming from your CPA, for example, and there's a PDF, you know, hey, your taxes or whatever. So you, you need to be careful and mindful of that. And again, that's where having a good antivirus product, having a good malware product, and some of the other tools that are out there come into play. 
Who would you recommend on uh, antivirus, anti-malware? So I, I use a variety depending on what my client's exact needs are. Um, malware Bytes is tried and true for malware. I mean, it's literally in their name and they do a really good job. Um, I use Bitdefender. Uh, we use Webroot for some of our clients. Um, Acronis just depends on what the client's cyber needs are. Uh, you know, we have different clients that have uh, security uh, needs, maybe it's HIPAA, maybe it's PCI compliance, and so we, ta we tailor that to whatever their, their individual needs and what their threat landscape looks like. Now, if it's someone just um, like uh, Jenny Jones, the uh, average mm -hmm. homeowner, yeah, it, uh, your AVAST, your AVGs are typically good for, for your average homeowners. Norton? Uh, you know, uh, man, I'm on, I'm on film now. Uh, <laughs> Norton and McAfee used to be the go-tos for right. it. Right. But unfortunately, uh, from what we've experienced is their products have become so bloated um, that a lot of times they'll actually decrease performance of the machine substantially. So anytime you add in antivirus software, you expect that there's going to be a performance decrease. I mean, that's it's scanning, okay. it's doing whatever. Uh, but a, a lot of these have become bloated and with add-ons, et cetera, that uh, can sometimes uh, slow the machine down more than necessary. Cool. We'll have um, a list of these names, mm -hmm. Avast and all of that, at the end of the uh, video. and. That way you can uh, go to their websites and download them. Um, it, to me, this is just becoming more and more of a headache. It and is. And it's a danger. It really is. Uh, you hear all the time about uh, someone locking up your computer for ransomware. Exactly. And, you know, Microsoft put out something uh, a couple years ago, and, and I can give you the link on this. 99.9% .9 of account compromises could be prevented by implementing just a few things. One is what we've talked about with like the SLAM method. The other is to enter two-factor authentication on your accounts. Mm -hmm. and many of us probably have this already on our bank accounts, oh, you yeah. know, where they send you a text message. But do that for your Facebook account, do that for your email account, do that for your web TV or your uh, direct TV accounts so that if you were to get compromised, you know, you have a strong password because everybody has a strong password. We never reuse the same password or, or we make... Sure we make, don't. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Never use absolutes, right? We don't make monkey butt 17 become monkey butt 18 or any of that type of stuff. <laughs> but enabling two-factor authentication on your accounts will prevent 99, according to Microsoft, 99.9% .9 of account compromises. And that's so, so easy to do. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, but it's just... So you just, you've got to take the time to do it. And the other thing is they'll use the least policy or least privilege account possible um, on your computer. Set up an administrator account and then set up a, a user account and do your day-to-day -day stuff under your user account and just install software, et cetera, with the admin account. And that will help with the ransomware. That keeps it from being able to get its foothold and stronghold in there. And oh, then, I've never heard of that. Good. Yeah, and if, if anybody wants to check uh, out our Facebook page, we post videos about this stuff all the time, and we have different uh, blog posts on our uh, website about how to enable two-factor authentication, how to do that type of stuff. Uh, shameless plug, it's shipmanconsult.com, S-H-I-P-M-A-N-C-O-N-S-U-L-T.com, Shipman Consult. Shipman Consulting, somebody already had, and you know, so mm -hmm. just bought that one. Um, but like I said, the SLAM method, two-factor authentication, policy of least privilege, and just you know, a little bit of common sense will, will help. You bet. But it, this is such a big thing that um, really this needs to get out. Um, I, I would wish that everyone would see this video, share it, let everyone know about it. Um, there's billions of dollars. I saw Absolutely. the number the other day and I've forgotten it uh, as how much is being scammed. Yes, sir. From people. Yes, sir. And our, our business clients are, for their cybersecurity, their ransomware portions of their insurance, they're having to implement, like I said, more and more of these safeguards because of the, the costs that are, are being incurred to businesses. Unfortunately, I had somebody contact me um, a while back. There wasn't a client at the time that they had uh, fell for a phishing scam and they lost control of their business, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram pages. And they they developed, they'd spent so much time developing a, a huge following and using that for their for their marketplace and it was gone. And Facebook, they weren't very helpful in getting it back. So a lawyer, little bit of a little bit of prevention, you know. Right. A lot of your companies like Facebook, Instagram and those, you're kind of on your own there. Right. I mean, if you have a problem with it, it's kind of like good luck. Good luck, right, yeah. And, and so that's why we want to do this stuff on the front end right. so that you don't have to try to go through that on the back end. 
And here again, it's just a matter of uh, some common sense. If you didn't ask for it, probably someone else is wanting to get into your bank account. Right. Just leave it alone. The delete key is your friend in a lot of cases. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just if, just move those messages to the trash. Empty your empty your trash. Um, you know, like, like I said, the two-factor authentication. That's huge, uh, I, I, and I, I know I sound like I'm, I'm harping on that, but so many things that I encounter could be simply eliminated by turning on two-factor authentication. No, I've got uh, two-factor on just about everything. Um, when I run across one, I don't have it on there, it goes on. Exactly, exactly. And yes, it's a pain every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I've got to walk over to another table and get my phone, right. but yeah. I can put up with a lot of that. Yeah, it's like you said, it is a pain, but so is going back through and changing all your banking information and oh. setting up all your auto pays and doing all that stuff with new accounts. So it's 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 a lot easier to pick up, walk over and pick up your phone. Chances are, if you're like me, you sit at your desk too much anyways, you probably need the steps. Right. It's, <laughs> but I'm going to be sitting at my desk for a long time calling everybody I've set up accounts with and changing my bank information if I was to get compromised. You bet. So just be careful out there. Yes. Watch your stuff. We'll have links on here for um, antivirus software. We'll have other uh, examples of some of the uh, phishing scams of, or that are there. I appreciate it. I'd never heard of the um, smishing. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, there's like 20 different ones, and and that's why I had to bring some notes because I'd never remember them all. <laughs> uh, you know, it seems like there's a new one all the time that somebody's coming up with. But yeah, smishing and vishing are. Or I'm seeing more and more of that where people actually make the vishing is the phone call that makes you think that it's, that it's legit, but it's it's not. You bet. No, I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having much, me. Thanks very much, man. Um, appreciate everything that you guys are doing down in Henrietta. And by the way, shout out to you guys at the chamber. Well, that was an awesome banquet that you guys put on the other well, night. Thank and thanks for having us for that. Hey, not a problem. And again, we'll have links on everything um, at the tail end of this uh, video. So be watching for that and be safe on your computer, for God's sake. It's just... There's too many people out there that are low lives. That's right. Thank you, Doy. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Hey.